Rift Valley Fever is an acute hepatic and sometimes hemorrhagic disease of domestic ruminants and humans in Africa, caused by a mosquito-borne virus. Epidemics occur when particularly heavy rains favor the breeding of mosquito vectors. The disease was first recognized in the Rift Valley in Kenya at the turn of the century and was recorded in southern Africa late in 1950 when an estimated 100,000 sheep died and 500,000 ewes aborted in South Africa alone. A second severe epidemic occurred in southern Africa in 1974 and 1975, during which more severe losses were reported than the 1950 epidemic. In 1977 and 1978, a major epidemic occurred in the Nile Delta and along the Nile in Egypt, causing an unprecedented number of human infections and deaths, as well as numerous deaths and abortions in sheep and cattle and some losses in goats, water buffaloes, and camels. Rift Valley fever is caused by a flebovirus of the family Bagnaviridae. The virus is very stable. Outbreaks or serological evidence of Rift Valley fever have been limited to the African continent and Madagascar. Apart from the more recent outbreaks in Sudan, Egypt, Senegal and Mauritania, epidemics have tended to occur in eastern, central and southern African countries, usually at irregular intervals of 5 to 15 years or longer associated with above average rainfall. The recent outbreaks of Rift Valley fever in countries in North and West Africa occurred independently of rainfall in dry countries, apparently in association with vectors which breed in large rivers and dams. The central enigma in the epidemiology of Rift Valley fever has always concerned the fate of the virus during the inter-epidemic periods. For decades, it was widely accepted that the virus is endemic to indigenous forests, where it circulated in mosquitoes and unknown vertebrates, and that it spread to livestock rearing areas when heavy rains favored the breeding of epidemic mosquito vectors. However, there is no proof that the virus is maintained in transmission cycles in birds, monkeys, baboons, or other wild vertebrates. Although the possibility of endemicity in forests cannot be dismissed entirely, it is currently postulated that Rift Valley fever virus in sub-Saharan Africa is maintained in inter-epidemic periods, principally by transovarial transmission in Aedine mosquitoes, particularly in areas where there are dambos or broad flays with a low level of transmission to livestock. It is thought that epidemics are precipitated by abnormally heavy rains which lead to an explosive increase in vector populations and the spread of the disease from these endemic foci. Serological surveys in cattle and wildlife indicate that varying amounts of virus activity occur each year in certain areas in eastern and southern Africa without epidemics occurring. In southern Africa, the onset of epidemics tends to be recognized late in summer following an initial increase in vector populations. Pans, dambos and flays retain water for months or even years and constitute an ideal environment for the breeding of mosquitoes, particularly floodwater breeding aedines of the subgenera Aedemorphus and Neomelaniconian, which attach their eggs to vegetation such as grasses, sedges and rushes at the water's edge. In contrast to culicine mosquitoes, the eggs of Aedines have to be subjected to a period of drying as the water recedes in order to hatch on being wetted again when next the pan, dambo or flay floods. Thus Aedine mosquitoes overwinter as eggs. The eggs can survive for long periods in dried mud, possibly for several seasons, if pans, dambos or flays remain dry. The flooding of dambos or flays and the humid weather conditions prevailing in epidemics favor the breeding not only of the Aedine maintenance vectors such as Aedes macintoshi, Aedes unidentatus and Aedes juppi 
and the non-Aedine mosquitoes, such as Culex and Anopheles species, which serve as epidemic vectors, but also of other biting insects, such as midges, phlebotomids, stomoxids, and simulids, which are all potential mechanical transmitters of Rift Valley fever virus. Contagion is not considered to be important in livestock, as opposed to the case in humans. The pathogenesis of Rift Valley fever encompasses the spread of virus from the initial site of replication to target organs such as the spleen and the liver. Intense viremia results from the release of virus following replication in target organs. Hepatic disease occurs in all species, but it is most severe in extremely susceptible hosts, such as newborn lambs and kids. In these hosts, hepatic lesions rapidly progress to a massive necrotic hepatitis just before death. In less susceptible animals, such as adult sheep and goats, the hepatic lesions tend to be more focal in nature. The hemostatic derangement, which manifests as a viral hemorrhagic fever with bleeding tendency and evidence of disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, is most severe in the fatal hepatic syndrome in animals and humans. Although a wide variety of domestic and wild ruminants are susceptible to Rift Valley fever, the disease is mainly of economic importance in sheep, goats and cattle, with newborn animals being most susceptible. In newborn lambs and kids, the incubation period is usually 24 to 36 hours. Onset of the disease is marked by fever, listlessness, disinclination to move or feed, evidence of abdominal pain, and rapid respiration. The course of the disease is usually per acute, and lambs rarely survive more than 24 to 36 hours after the onset of the first signs of illness. Many are simply found dead. In animals less than a week old, mortality is 90% or more. Lambs and kids older than two weeks and mature sheep and goats are significantly less susceptible than our newborns. Most of these animals develop the acute disease. Affected animals show fever, anorexia, listlessness, and an increased respiratory rate. Some animals may develop a bloody or fetid diarrhea and a blood-tinged mucopurulent nasal discharge. A few animals may be icteric. Pregnant sheep and goats may abort at any stage of gestation as a result of the febrile reaction and or infection of the fetus. Aborted fetuses are usually autolyzed. Retained placenta and purulent metritis may occur as complications of abortion. In sheep, mortality rates varying from 5 to 30 percent and abortion rates of 40 to 100 percent have been reported in outbreaks. Goats are said to be more resistant to the disease than sheep, but in some outbreaks, similar mortality and abortion rates to those in sheep have occurred. The disease in calves resembles that in lambs and sheep, with occurrence of fever, inappetence, weakness, and a bloody or fetid diarrhea. A higher proportion of calves may develop icterus. In fatal disease, death generally occurs two to eight days after infection. The estimated mortality rate for calves during epidemics is about 10 to 20 percent. Infection is frequently inapparent in adult cattle, but some animals develop acute disease characterized by fever, anorexia, staring coat, dysgalactia, and a bloody or fetid diarrhea. The death rate in adult cattle does not generally appear to exceed 10%. In animals with a more prolonged course, icterus may develop. Frequently, abortion is the only manifestation of the disease in a herd. 
Average abortion rates of 15 to 40 percent have been reported during epidemics. As in sheep and goats, cows may abort at any stage of gestation, the aborted fetus usually being moderately autolyzed. No pathogenicity tests have been conducted on camels, but antibody has been detected in camels where abortions occurred during Rift Valley fever epidemics. In Egypt, high prevalences of Rift Valley fever antibody were found in domesticated water buffaloes, and abortion and low death rates have been associated with the disease. Low prevalences of antibody to Rift Valley fever virus but no evidence of disease have been detected in African buffaloes and a few species of antelopes. In contrast to the main vector, Culex pipians, in the Egyptian epidemic of 1977-78, the principal mosquito vectors of Rift Valley fever in southern Africa tend to be zoophilic and sylvatic and are therefore not inclined to feed on humans. Humans become infected mainly from contact with animal tissue. Generally, persons at risk are involved in the livestock industry, such as farmers, farm laborers who salvage carcasses for human consumption, veterinarians and their assistants, and abattoir workers. The spectrum of human disease, uh, we know that they vary from human infections from the more or less inapparent. Uh, I myself had a laboratory infection that was virtually inapparent, uh, to the, the most common type of disease syndrome is a, is a febrile disease with headache and muscle pains, photophobia, sore eyes and so forth. And then you get the few extreme cases where you either get encephalitis or a, a frank hemorrhagic disease or a combination of the two. Now, the, the more, that, those probably occur in about, up until now, as far as we know, in all the other outbreaks, less than 0.5 percent of people that become infected with Rift Valley fever get the severe fatal forms of the disease. But there's an ocular complication which can follow the ordinary syndrome you know, with the, the muscle pain, the myalgia and, and so forth. There is a, 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 an ocular complication which follows a few weeks after the acute illness in which you get little small retinal hemorrhages and uh, scotomas, blurred spots in your vision for a few weeks or months and then generally resolves. But in the odd case, you can have severe uh, retinal hemorrhages and, and, and even detachment of retina and permanent blindness. In Egypt, where there were vast numbers of people infected, they, they actually record, recorded even a bilateral blindness, permanent blindness. The hepatic lesions of Rift Valley fever are essentially similar in all domestic animals and humans, varying mainly with the age of the affected individual. The most severe lesions occur in aborted sheep fetuses and newborn lambs, in which the liver is usually moderately to greatly enlarged, soft, friable, and yellowish-brown to dark reddish-brown in color, with irregular congested patches and sometimes hemorrhages of varying size scattered throughout the parenchyma. Numerous grayish-white necrotic foci, 0.5 to 1 millimeter in diameter, are invariably present in the parenchyma, but they may not be clearly discernible because of the discoloration of the organ. There may be edema and hemorrhages in the wall of the gallbladder and hepatic lymph node. Icterus is evident in only about 10% of affected lambs because of the per acute course of the disease. The hepatic lesions in adult sheep are generally not as severe or as widespread as in newborn lambs. Pinpoint reddish to grayish white necrotic foci may be distributed throughout the parenchyma, and in a small proportion of sheep, there are larger centrilobular hemorrhages and necrotic lesions which impart a mottled appearance to the organ. Hemorrhages and edema of the wall of the gallbladder are common, and the lumen may contain a blood coagulum or blood-tinged bile. The livers of aborted fetuses, calves and adult cattle resemble those of adult sheep. 
The wall of the gallbladder is frequently edematous and hemorrhagic. The hepatic lesions in newborn lambs are almost invariably accompanied by numerous petechiae and ecchymosis in the mucosa of the abumesum, and its contents are dark chocolate brown as a result of the presence of partially digested blood. The contents of the small intestine may be similar in appearance. Most mature sheep and cattle have hemorrhages and edema in the abomasal folds, and sometimes copious amounts of free blood in the lumen of the intestines. In most animals, the spleen is slightly to moderately enlarged with hemorrhages in the capsule. In all animals, the peripheral and visceral lymph nodes are enlarged, edematous, and may have petechiae. Other changes include widespread subcutaneous, serosal, and visceral hemorrhages, mild to moderate effusion of fluid, often blood-tinged, into body cavities, and congestion and edema of the lungs. Hepatic necrosis is the most characteristic and striking microscopic lesion of Rift Valley fever in all domestic animals and humans. One should suspect Rift Valley fever when heavy rains are followed by the occurrence of abortions in sheep, goats and cattle together with fatal disease, particularly in young animals, which is marked by necrotic hepatitis and hemorrhage in the abumasum and serosal surfaces. Frequently, there is also influenza-like illness in farm workers. Specimens to be submitted for laboratory confirmation of the diagnosis include heparinized or clotted blood, plasma or serum of live affected animals or tissue samples, including liver, spleen, kidney, lymph nodes, and heart blood of dead animals. Samples from aborted fetuses should include brain, since this is usually less autolyzed or putrefied than viscera. Specimens should be securely packaged and submitted on ice to a suitable laboratory for isolation of virus or demonstration of antibody. Where delay in getting specimens to the laboratory is unavoidable, or where material has to be transported at ambient temperature, tissue samples can be preserved in glycerol saline solution. Virus can be isolated readily in a variety of cell cultures, or in suckling and weaned mice or hamsters inoculated intracerebrally or intraperitoneally. In animals that survive the disease, Paired serum samples, one taken during the acute illness and the other two to three weeks later, should be submitted for antibody tests. Tissue specimens from the liver, spleen and lymph nodes should also be collected in 10% buffered formalin for histopathological examination. Histopathological liver lesions are pathognomonic and in particular, the hepatic lesions of newborn lambs leave little room for doubt about the diagnosis of Rift Valley fever. Viral antigen can be detected in tissue sections by immunoperoxidase staining. Rift Valley fever vessels brawn disease and the other arthropod-borne virus diseases tend to occur under the same climatic conditions. Rift Valley fever should be differentiated from vessels brawn disease as both diseases can cause mortality in newborn lambs and kids and abortion in ewes. However, Rift Valley fever is associated with much higher mortality and abortion rates than vessels brawn disease. Agents causing mortality associated with hepatic lesions, hemorrhages, and or icterus, which may superficially resemble Rift Valley fever in domestic ruminants, include poisonings by plants, such as Senecio, Crotillaria, and Cestrum species, as well as bacterial septicemias, such as Pasturalosis, Salmonellosis, and Anthrax.
Nairobi sheep disease could also be confused with Rift Valley fever. Sometimes abortion is the only sign of Rift Valley fever in cattle, and diseases which must be eliminated by appropriate laboratory investigations include brucellosis, leptospirosis, chlamydiosis, salmonellosis, and bovine viral diarrhea. A major factor contributing to the abatement of epidemics is the onset of cold weather, which suppresses vector activity. In southern Africa, outbreaks tend to terminate abruptly soon after the first frosts of winter. In contrast, virus activity may persist in parts of Africa which experience warmer winters. Vector control is of limited or no use in the control of Rift Valley fever and immunization remains the only effective way to protect livestock. Although the use of vaccine is beneficial in reducing losses, it is generally applied too late to avert epidemics or to prevent considerable losses from occurring. Epidemics of Rift Valley fever tend to occur at irregular intervals of many years, and it is usually difficult to persuade farmers to vaccinate livestock during long inter-epidemic periods. The occurrence of epidemics is difficult to predict and they usually have a very sudden onset. Hence it is advisable in African countries with large sheep and goat populations to immunize the offspring of vaccinated ewes and nannies on a regular basis at six months of age when colostral immunity has waned with a single dose of the modified live Smithburn vaccine. This should afford lifelong protection. Lambs and kids of susceptible dams can be immunized at any age. A range of anomalies of the central nervous system, including porencephaly, hydroencephaly, and microencephaly, as well as arthrogryposis and other defects of fetuses and hydrops amnii and prolonged gestation, may occur if ewes are inoculated with the modified live Smithburn strain vaccine between about five and ten weeks of gestation. Its use in pregnant animals should only be contemplated in the face of an epidemic when its adverse effects may be outweighed by the dangers of allowing the disease to take its natural course. It is advised that only inactivated vaccines should be used when it is considered necessary to immunize animals in countries where the presence of Rift Valley fever has not been proven. In contrast to the live Smithburn vaccine, formalin inactivated vaccines are safe for use even in pregnant animals. But they are expensive to produce and induce short-lived immunity so that the administration of regular booster doses is necessary to ensure adequate protection. The live Smithburn Rift Valley fever vaccine induces poor antibody response in cattle, and they should preferably be immunized with formalin inactivated vaccine to ensure that cows are able to confer colostral immunity on their offspring. Cattle should receive a booster dose three to six months after initial vaccination followed by annual boosters before the rains are due, as immunity only lasts about one year. Veterinarians and others engaged in the livestock industry should be made aware of the potential dangers of exposure to zoonotic agents in handling tissues of diseased animals, and precautions should be increased during Rift Valley fever epidemics. Protective clothing such as gloves and masks should be used when doing necropsies on suspected cases of Rift Valley fever or handling infected tissues. A formalin inactivated cell culture vaccine produced in the United States of America has been used on an experimental basis to immunize persons such as laboratory and field workers who are regularly exposed to Rift Valley fever infection. The recent epidemics in Egypt, Senegal, Mauritania, Kenya and Somalia were characterized by unusually high morbidity rates in both domestic ruminants and humans and serve as a warning that Rift Valley fever 
can not only extend beyond its usual distribution range, but also has the potential to occur outside Africa.